on the octopus in the sea. Remember the Ringo Starr song? I was totally thinking about that song when when I was watching it, just because I was, I had a, um, I just started thinking about octopuses. I don't know why, because I eat calamari. You don't know know why? From watching this movie, you don't know why you, well, I I just started thinking about how I eat calamari, huh? Um, Oh, I see what you're saying. I get it. You get it. Just yeah. yes. I thought you said I watched this movie and I, I kept and it made me think of octopus. I don't know why I'm all no no. no. It made me think five. about what I do with octopus. Well, because I guess squid is not really octopus, right? I'm, I'm that's what I'm trying to uh, rationalize here. I think they're two different animals, right? But they're similar. They're they're from the same family. But uh, but uh, and they taste great. But I, I I could tell you this, Ruben. I'm gonna have a hard time eating. I don't think I'll eat octopus anymore. A lot of people say an octopus is like an alien. But the strange thing is, as you get closer to them, you realize that you're very similar in a lot of ways. Hey there, welcome to Pod and Deliver. Ruben, this is movie night, and tonight we have a film called The Octopus Teacher. And this film came out in 2001. It actually won an Academy Award for Best Documentary that year. I've been seeing it, you know, advertised for um, for a time now, maybe months, weeks. But I thought it didn't really catch me until I started looking into it. I go, oh, man, this this looks interesting. And I sat down and watched it. I I, I called you, I remember I texted you, told you about it regarding, hey, let's let's go ahead and check this out. And I'm, I'm not kidding you. I watched this film and I really felt connected with uh octopuses the whole idea of uh this whole world under the sea you know and this you know, this man by the name of craig foster who is really trying to he's been a documentary documentarian for years at least 20 25 years and mostly in africa he's from uh south africa and as a kid he actually uh swam in the ocean there where a lot of this documentary is taking place but this is a man who's not happy with his life, not connecting with people, not his family, his wife, his son. And he just decides to go ahead and start swimming in the place where he used to swim as a young boy. And he finds this world, beautiful world of fish and kelp and uh, underground forests and, and just different types of animal life in the water. And it was just so beautifully shot. I know the director, one of the directors of Pipa Ekrik. And, and I know I was looking um, into these people who did this the film because I one of the things I was amazed by Ruben is is just even how they would swim in the water uh, Craig Foster and he would keep his breath you know I didn't know but most people could only hold the breath for what one or two minutes he could hold his breath for six minutes and so now that made sense like because he would stay down there for a long time studying and and what really the story is about is him um, discovering this octopus and finding out this octopus really was an intelligent animal right and he saw what it could do regarding even the relationship they had. Uh, it, 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 you know, the octopus was not sure this this human is going to hurt him or her. Um, right away, you find out it's a her because he 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 doesn't ever use a name. He just calls her her. And so you know, it's female. And, and so you, you just follow the life of this relationship for almost a whole year. And I didn't know this, but octopuses don't live very long, right? Uh, one to five years, and females about eighteen months. And so he follows this octopus through tough times where these little sharks are trying to, you know, that's the number one predator. And I think the whole point of this is that he's discovering himself again. He's discovering how to let go of certain things that he needs to let go in his life, how to connect with his son. Um, he didn't tell you about what happened to the wife, but looking into it, yeah, they had a divorce and he, he remarries. But that that's not the important part. Part, part is that he starts learning how to just even connect with people and you see that with his son a lovely part of the at the end of the film i don't want to go too much into it and spoil it and but this film ruben was just so beautiful um i just had a good feeling afterwards and i'm like oh this is great after you know watching some of the films that we watched recently i'm like this this was an uplifter but uh how did you feel about it well it is titled my octopus teacher and um it's important to note, I think, that if people are expecting to see a typical National Geographic Jacques Cousteau, I mean, that I'm dating myself and mentioning Jacques Cousteau, but a uh, type of documentary, they're going to be um, kind of thrown a little bit 
by this one because you are not prepared at the life of an octopus and what they're about. I knew a little bit about octopus by listening to a podcast about five years ago about their abilities to change colors and shapes. And uh, so in the opening part of this documentary, they mentioned, he mentions that the octopus is almost like an alien, you know, from outer space. And it's interesting because that the, uh, I just heard this quote that we know this, just this last week that we know more about the surface of Mars than we do about the ocean floor. And it's powerful, this idea that there may be aliens on this planet. And one of them is this octopus. And you, I, I can't straight, you know, uh, emphasize enough this, this animal and its abilities so at one point it loses its arm. Now you have already seen up to that point the many facets of this octopus, right? That are just incredibly profound at how intelligent this octopus is. Its ability to understand geometry in catching prey and uh, its abilities in terms of camouflage, its conne social connections. It makes not only the fish, but with this man also when it loses its arm so by the time it loses its arm the first thing i thought of was that thing's gonna grow back it's gonna grow back and it does yeah. uh so when i think about this my you know um my octopus teacher i was thinking why did he call it that it, 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 i just kept it, i kept thinking about it and i think at least my interpretation of things is that you can show this to not just students, but just to people, and they can learn about life through the octopus. What can you learn? That to vary, one of the things is to vary your approach. If something doesn't work out for you in your life, change things up like the octopus did when it attacked the lobster. So it, you know, I guess it's a natural prey for the octopus, a lobster. And it wasn't able to get it one day, but the next day it switched it up and it was able to, uh, to, to catch the lobster and eat it. And the other thing, of course, um, many things, but another big thing I got out of this, maybe this title, Octopus Teacher, is how to handle setbacks. Now that attack from the pajama shark. Oh, wow. And, yeah. and when it uh, resulted in the loss of its, of its arm, if it's, I guess you call it, but it's, yeah, it's tentacles arm. or, yeah. Uh, tentacle is that it, it looked like it was going to die, but it came back stronger <laughs> than ever. And so there's something I, I could sense as I'm watching this documentary that this guy, Foster, you said? Yeah, his name is Foster, Craig Foster. Craig Foster is kind of scratch the surface. There's probably even more things that it could do. Yeah. This octopus. And maybe there are more creatures down there that we haven't discovered that can that are just want us to push ourselves a little more to, to find out what they're about. Because in the beginning, the octopus kind of reached out to him. They kind of held each other and and mm -hmm. it it said, hey yeah come learn from me there it's pretty breathtaking oh uh, yeah that documentary ruben i you know going on with that as, as a teacher i was really thinking about this afterwards i go part of it also gave me the idea that sometimes we get in a rut as a teacher and we need to mix it up like you shared and do something else do something different uh see things differently uh, uh stand in a different direction um uh, uh, maybe not lecture, do a lot more activity, whatever it is, just mix it up. And, I, and and to add to that, at the end of the film, you see him connecting with his son and teaching his son things that he learned, um, uh, you know, diving and, and, and exploring the surfaces of, 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 you know, the waters. And his son, you could see, just, just was open to it. And he really, I think, A, he wanted to be with his dad, but B, he definitely was interested in sea life. And so you just love that when you see your students just get excited about things. I love it. And Ruben, when they don't, when I see them kind of like 
glossy eyed, I go, oh, shoot, I got to <laughs> mix this up. And I think it's easy not to do that as teachers when we see that glossiness in, in students' eyes, like, well, I already have this lesson. No, no, you have to go back to the drawing board and say, you know what, I got to change it. And after COVID, it's been a lot more challenging because students don't want to talk as much, but you have to get that going. You have to mix it up. You have to still get in the game and not give up. And so anyway, I, I've enjoyed the film as well, Ruben, and I do recommend it. If you haven't seen um, My Octopus Teacher, please watch it. Uh, have yourself a wonderful evening. And, and you know what, guys, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We really uh, appreciate that. And you know what? We'll see you soon on Pod and Deliver. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.